Um, well, as you guys know, we have two major fires that uh, took off today on us, and then we have one that's still going from yesterday. Uh, we have a fire up in Jackson Township, up in uh, Ocean County, and that fire is 350 acres with 60% containment. Um, we still do have some structures threatened. However, all the evacuations have been lifted and the folks have returned to their homes. And we have the other fire over in Gloucester County, Clayton Barrow. It's in uh, the Glassboro Wildlife Management Area. That fire is 133 acres and 35% contained. There's no structures threatened or anything like that that we need to be concerned with as far as for the public's sake. Um, there will be quite a bit of smoke from all the fires that we've had in the last couple days. Um, tomorrow we're anticipating some really wicked fire weather. Uh, there's been a red flag posted for the entire state of New Jersey. So um, until tomorrow, I guess we won't know what's going on, but there's certainly some potential there for some serious wildfire problems tomorrow as well. All the fires that we have now, we are content with where they stand. Um, they all have containment lines around them, and crews are continuing to just uh, patrol the area, mop them up, and try to keep the fire within its perimeter. Uh, I think so far this year we've had over 8,000 acres burn here with over 1,200 wildfires. This year's been crazy dry, which everyone knows. Uh, October was the busiest month on record for the Forest Fire Service, so hopefully we get some precipitation here in the not too distant future. and. We can start putting some of these wildfires to bed and give our folks a break. I'm going to turn it over to Trevor. He's going to update you guys here on the fire here in Evesham Township. Steve, one question, if I could, sure. on manpower. Last night you were saying how it's, these fires are taxing uh, your crews uh, with no end in sight. Can you just give us an, an idea of, of what these crews are going through and, and the onslaught and well, how busy you've been? Well, there, there's just an example. We were out in Jackson Township there last night till probably 11 to 12 o'clock. Um, and this fire came in around 9 o'clock this morning, so um, it just seems like it's been nonstop. The uh, folks that are out here fighting these fires, they get little, if any, rest on occasion, depending on how busy they are. Like I was saying, each one of these folks have a uh, geographic area they're responsible for, so when fires occur in those areas, they're, they're tasked with going out there and uh, managing them. So it is definitely taxing them. They're uh, putting in a lot of long hours. Um, and you know, these are just the big fires you guys are hearing about there. Um, it's not unusual to have a handful of fires throughout the night that they have to get involved in as well. So um, definitely taxing, you know, they're, uh, they're not getting much sleep, put it that way. It, it's wearing them down. So hopefully that will all change here by the end of next week. We've seen some precip in the forecast. Hopefully that holds true and uh, they'll at least get a break and catch up on their paperwork. Trevor. Good evening, everybody. I'm pleased to report that we made really good progress since last we spoke a few hours ago. So the fire is 50% contained at 300 acres burning here in Evesham and Voorhees townships. And all the evacuations have been lifted as of 1830 hours, night 630 hours. And um, 104 homes are still threatened. But, um, but we feel, feel really comfortable. Everybody can return to their homes and uh, the fire's looking really good. Um, there's some local road closures still in effect and we really want to thank the public for their patience and understanding in heeding the official's warnings and, um, and, and all of our assisting agencies help and support as well. So it's a big team effort. Things are looking really good out there. We're proud of proud of our support and our firefighters and thank them for their service so keep doing what they're doing and um, the the forecast of what we plan to do the next couple days here uh, we're going to keep patrolling this fire making sure things are good um, keep up in that containment percentage and um, and just keep responding to fires throughout the state here and again super high staffing right now we've got our fire tower staff detecting those fires but during their small stages, their beginning stages, so that we can quickly attack them. And um, of course we have the restrictions in effect to limit any um, accidental fires from the public, whether that be a campfire or somebody burning brush or what have you. So it's a
campfire burn. It's a fire burn here in, in, New, Jer in New Jersey. And um, thank you. I know every fire seems to be different. You have one in Glassboro where there's no no building threatened. Could you explain the challenges like you had with this one and, and the different challenges you have when, when homes are threatened? Sure, I can speak to this fire. So this fire um, came upon us very quickly. As you know, it was um, detected at 9 this morning through 911, and the fire tower picked it up at the same time. Uh, resources got here quickly. Immediately, the fire was threatening homes. So our firefighters took quick action to prevent those fire, you know, the fire from impacting those homes. So it's just a whole lot more complex than a more remote wildfire. So there's, um, you know, obviously we have to deal with infrastructure, but our primary mission, primary mission is protecting lives, property, and natural resources. So lives are the most important. Can you talk a little bit about, about tonight's fire and specifically and what that looks like for you guys? How many crews are you going to have out? things of that nature a lot of neighbors are still worried about yeah yeah so we're um we have adequate amount of resources out tonight sufficient for uh the duties here for this evening we're patrolling and mopping up and uh strengthening those containment lines we're monitoring it making sure the lines are safe so that way when uh, morning comes we can get back at it and um really get out there and, and make even further progress can you talk about the progress that we're seeing Yes. Now, but it seems like a lot has been done in the last few Yes. Hours. So um, we did a burnout operation, which, as I mentioned earlier, a burnout is using fire to our advantage to burn the fuels between the fire and a natural barrier. So we did a burnout behind the homes to protect the homes. So basically, remo we removed the fuel of the fire near those homes so that the fire couldn't get to those houses. So that operation was completed a couple hours ago and we're feeling really good about that. It's excellent, um, excellent containment around that area now. Going into tomorrow, um, the whole area, not just New Jersey, but Delaware, Pennsylvania, everybody's in a red flag warning. Do you guys share resources across state lines for a day like this? Um, typically, no. However, you know, again, I had mentioned last night, New Jersey has a full-time fire service, you know, wildland fires agency. So, we're in a little bit better shape than most. Um, so if there's anything close to the border, typically our, our folks up north, where you can just you know walk from one state to another, we will send resources over if uh, you know if need be, or they can go over and help quickly. But right now, um, you know, we don't have any plans to go over there. However, if they call and it's something we can do to help them out, we certainly will. Any updates tomorrow? As far well, each one is, yeah, basically every day, um, you know, fires are evaluated and we put out a uh, sit report, which is typically you guys will see it on our social media page, and we'll update the containment of the fire if, if that's required. We'll let people know whether structures are still threatened, if there's any roads are closed. So we do a lot through social media, but these fires are constantly being reevaluated. Um, all fires, even the fires that you guys don't even know exist. Um, you know, the Cumberland County fire we're still dealing with. We have a fire from back in July in Chatsworth. You know, that fire's still being looked at. We have fires down in Estelle Manor that, you know, they didn't get the media attention, but, you know, there's certainly a concern. Um, and what we have to be really cautious of is, again, you know, the fuels are extremely dry. So if we were to get an ember or something blow outside of our containment line, we could be off to the races again. So, you know, we're going to have folks on all these fires and they'll be updated accordingly. And, you know, hopefully everything stays put like we're hoping for, but we won't know that until tomorrow comes. Do you know how many different agencies responded to help with this fire? Because, I mean, we saw crews from Cherry Hill tonight posted in one of the neighborhoods. It seems like you guys had so many agencies coming in to assist. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We had at least three counties here to assist us. We had the state police, so multiple levels, local county, state, and um, it's just, you know, really great pre-planning and relationships ahead of time help make these um, incidents successful. Awesome. Thank you all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone.